This is Annalie Waters' lead tape setup on her ALWC paddle. Let's see what her twist weight is. Oh my god! Finally, the video you've been waiting for. I have the most up-to-date information regarding lead tape, utilizing the most cutting-edge tools to measure twist weight and swing weight. If you saw the first iteration of this video, I have very different results now with my new up-to-date measurement tools I had flown in via Next Day Air so I could get this video finalized for all of you as soon as I possibly could. So make sure to watch the video all the way through to see these new, more accurate results. I'm an optimization and tech junkie, so understanding how to customize my paddle is something I've recently been obsessed with. I spent multiple weeks compiling data utilizing my swing weight and twist weight machine to see if I could come up with the most optimal placements for not only just lead tape, but 3 gram pre-cut lead strips and also tungsten tape. Could tungsten be better by utilizing more surface area per gram of weight, or will lead tape come out on top? So without further ado, let's dig straight into it. First, let's define what weight, twist weight, and swing weight even are. Weight is going to be the overall weight of the paddle. Twist weight is how likely the paddle is to twist when hit off center near the edge of the paddle, which tends to relate to the size of the sweet spot. If you have a larger sweet spot, you should see less twisting of the face on off center shots, but the biggest takeaway from twist weight is going to be the overall stability of the paddle paddle on off-center hits. A higher number is better for twist weight. Twist weight of a stock paddle will range from around 4.5 all the way up to around 8.2. We have some 11 millimeter gearbox paddles around that 4.5 mark showing that thinner paddles are far less stable on off-center shots and have much smaller sweet spots in general than thicker paddles. The 16 millimeter 60 double black diamond comes in at 6.6 .6 for twist weight and then on the high end we have the older Engage Pursuit 6.0 series at around 7.9 to 8.2. Swing weight on the other hand is going to tell you where the weight in the paddle is distributed. A higher swing weight means there is more weight towards the head of the paddle, and a lower swing weight means that there is less weight distributed towards the head of the paddle. High swing weight will feel much more like a hammer, and lower swing weight will feel much more balanced, much faster in your hand, and will be less head heavy. Swing weight of a stock paddle will range between about 95 on the low end, all the way up to around 135 on the high end. Paddles you might know in this range are the Groovin Movin 13S at 99, the 6 0 Double Black Diamond at 114, and the Yola Hyperion CF. 16 millimeter at 127. Keeping swing weight low will put far less strain on your wrist, it will help out a ton with tennis elbow, and it will keep your hands super fast for reactions at the kitchen line. Generally speaking, there is no right answer for if higher or lower swing weight is better for you, but just know that lower means faster hands and less strain on your wrist and elbow, and higher means slower hands, more power, and more strain on your wrist and your elbow. So let's define the potential placements for lead tape and what those placements do for your game. You can add weight to the grip, which will essentially just add overall weight to the paddle and move the balance point down a touch without affecting twist weight or swing weight really at all. You can add weight to the throat of the paddle, which will raise the twist weight just a touch and make it a touch more stable, but while also keeping the added swing weight very low. You can add weight to the 4 and 8 o'clock positions where the flat edge begins. This is generally considered by most to be a very optimal placement for weighting as it greatly increases the twist weight while keeping the swing weight low. But make sure you watch this video all the way through to see my new findings, which you might find rather surprising. You can add weight to the 10 and 2 o'clock positions, which is the top side of the flat edge. This will also greatly improve twist weight and stability. It will also improve the power of the paddle, but it will come at a cost of a greater swing weight increase and will make the paddle feel much slower in the hands. Lastly, you can add weight to the very top of the paddle, the 12 o'clock position, which will mostly just increase power and swing weight, making the paddle feel very slow in the hands, but very powerful on drives and serves. For me, I prefer a paddle that doesn't feel slow or sluggish, so I have the time to react at the kitchen line and I would recommend the same for 99% of those of you who are watching this guide. We don't have the reaction time or the anticipation that the pros have and thus will usually benefit from faster hands at the kitchen line to keep up in hand battles and to react to speed ups. So for this guide, I will be aiming for the most optimal twist weight increase while keeping the swing weight as low as possible so we get the best of all worlds. Let's take one of the most popular shapes in the space, the hybrid shape made popular by 6-0 and do a deep dive to see what happens when we place weight at different locations on the paddle's edge. We have a 6-0 Ruby here, which will showcase a nice blend between elongated and standard shape paddles since it's the super
super popular hybrid shape. The 6 year Ruby comes in at a stock twist weight of 6.66 and a stock swing weight of 115.79, which are right in the middle of those ranges we talked about earlier. So now we have our baseline and we can start adding weight to different spots to see if we can find the most optimal setup for this starting paddle. Then we will extrapolate those results to different paddles to see if it all holds true for every paddle available and hopefully we have a defined answer to our initial question. So the first thing I did was cut out two 3 inch strips of 1 gram per inch lead tape, two 5 inch strips of 1 gram per inch lead tape, I grabbed two 3 gram carbon brand pre-cut lead strips, and I got a pack of four 8 inch strips of Selkirk tungsten tape. I then applied both 5 inch strips of lead tape starting 1 inch out from the grip going up the throat into the sides of the paddle, which is what Ben Johns does, and is how I've been setting up my paddles up until this point. This changed the twist weight from 6.66 to 7.26 and up to the swing weight from 115.79 to 117.8. Then I put both 5 inch strips at the 4 and 8 o'clock positions where the flat edge begins and that gave me a new twist weight of 7.61 and a new swing weight of 121.52. But this setup made the paddle feel quite a bit more head heavy. I tried 3 inches on the throat of the paddle which gave me a new twist weight of 6.9 and a new swing weight of 116.67 which wasn't as impressive. I then tried 3 inches at the 4 and 8 o'clock positions where the flat edge begins which gave me a new twist weight of 7.22 and a new swing weight of 118.24 which is just just marginally worse than the two 5 inch strips starting in the throat and going up the sides of the paddle. The two 5 inch strips starting 1 inch out from the handle and going up the throat kept the swing weight slightly lower, which generally we want this to be lower, and raised the twist weight slightly higher, which we want to be higher. I tried both 3 inch strips of lead tape at the 10 and 2 o'clock position or the top of the flat side edge, resulting in a new twist weight score of 7.23 and a new swing weight score of 120, which is a solid twist weight score but is a slightly higher higher swing weight score in comparison to our other options. I tried both 3 inch strips at the 12 o'clock position on the top side of the paddle resulting in a twist weight score of 6.78 and a swing weight score of 123.05. And lastly for the traditional lead tape category I also tried one 3 inch strip at the 12 o'clock position resulting in a twist weight score of 6.69 and a swing weight score of 119.76. So now I want to see what happens if I use two 3 gram pre-cut lead strips. These strips are around 2 inches long per 3 3 grams in comparison to the lead tape which is 3 inches long per 3 grams of weight. So let's see what happens if we use denser weight in a smaller surface area. I put the pre-cut strips at the 4 and 8 o'clock positions resulting in a twist weight of 7.25 and a swing weight of 117.84. Compared to the traditional lead tape in the same 4 and 8 o'clock positions, we can see there's essentially no difference in twist weight which makes sense from a physics standpoint, but there is a slight difference in swing weight. So I'd say if you're min-maxing and really want full optimization, the benefit here of using denser weight is that it will cut the swing weight down very slightly. It does this by keeping the weight distributed more close to the handle, which makes sense. Lastly, let's see what happens if we use these longer strips of tungsten. These strips each weigh 3 grams but are 8 inches long, so this should be interesting to see if we get any changes here. Let's place it starting at the 10 and 2 o'clock positions or the top side of the flat side edge and run it down just into the throat area so we get all of that side edge optimization for twist weight improvement. One strip resulted in a new twist weight score of 7.17 and a new swing weight score of 120.30 and two strips parallel to each other resulted in a new twist weight score of 7.68 and a new swing weight score of 121.29. Comparing these results to our most optimized results prior, we can conclude that this is not really an optimal setup if our main goal is to keep the swing weight down and get the twist weight up. But this setup has some major benefits for one particular type of paddle and I'll explain why once we finish this initial analysis. So the absolute best spots are 5 inches up the throat and the two 3 gram pre-cut strips at the 4 and 8 o'clock positions just where the flat side edge begins. The two 5 inch strips of lead tape starting 1 inch out from the handle going up the throat and into the sides of the paddle would be ideal for you if you want to slow your wrist down and help mitigate pop-ups or if you need to create more lag on your drives and serves. The two 3 gram pre-cut strips will be the most ideal if you want to keep the overall weight of your paddle down while optimizing for twist weight improvement. Okay, let's have some fun. I have a 12.7 millimeter low weight ALWC, the exact paddle Annalee Waters uses. The stock twist weight is 7.24 and the stock swing weight is 106, which are really good numbers. 
I recently saw a video of her showing she uses lead tape around the entire perimeter of the paddle. So I figured it might be fun to see what kind of twist weight and swing weight she's playing at. So I wrapped the entire edge of the paddle in lead tape. This is Annalie Waters lead tape setup on her ALWC paddle. Let's see what her twist weight is. Oh my god. And the swing weight is 124.77. She's swinging around Thor's hammer. That's insane. I never expected it to be that high of a resulting swing weight. The last couple findings in all of my recent testing with the new hyper accurate twist weight adapter from Graffiti are regarding paddle shape and edgeless paddles. So as far as paddle shape goes, I found that the twist weight improvement is even greater on standard shape paddles like a Volare Mach 2 Forza than it is with a hybrid shape or an elongated shaped paddle. It seems from my research that twist weight improvement is lower with an elongated paddle, likely due to the paddle's face being longer and more slender. I actually had to use four inches of lead tape on the side of my Carbon 1X elongated paddle to achieve the same twist weight improvement as three inches of lead tape on my Volare Mach 2 Forza standard shape paddle, which I honestly found rather interesting. But generally speaking, these results were totally linear across all paddle shapes, in that even though the twist weight improvement from three inches of lead tape on an elongated paddle was less, it was the same amount less in all areas and was linear relative to all positions tested. So the same two best setups we talked about before for optimizing twist weight and swing weight were still the best setups for these other paddle shapes. Lastly, this is where tungsten comes in to save the day and is a huge golden nugget in my findings. When it comes to edgeless paddles like the Black Diamond Infinity, it seems that the 8 inch strips of tungsten are a huge improvement for the entire sweet spot and twist weight of the paddle. Which makes sense given it doesn't have an edge guard. The Black Diamond Infinity has a stock twist weight of 5.67 and a swing weight of 106.98. With the two 3 gram pre-cut strips of lead on the 4 and 8 o'clock positions, the new twist weight is 6.23 and the new swing weight is 110.1. But unlike the paddles I had tested before, we see something slightly different happen here when we add the one 8 inch strip of tungsten up the sides of the paddle. We get a new twist weight score of 6.24 and a new swing weight score of 109.79, which is slightly more optimal than a paddle with an edge guard and in line with the two pre-cut strips. Lastly, I put two 8 inch strips of Selkirk tungsten tape parallel to each other on the sides of the paddle the same way I had before, and this resulted in a new twist weight of 6.8 and a new swing weight of 112.69, which are super optimal numbers. Still a reasonably low swing weight anyone would be happy with, a twist weight everyone would be happy with, and stability along the entire sides of the paddle. I think this makes a ton of sense for a lower swing weight edgeless paddle as it not only gives side to side stability, but also adds plow through, some power, and even extra vertical stability which is something not really talked about. So from now on as far as edgeless paddles go, if the stock paddle is under or around 112 for the swing weight, I will definitely be adding two 8 inch strips of tungsten parallel to each other starting at the top of the flat side edge and coming down just into the throat area giving me all the benefits of an edge guard with all the sweet aesthetics of an edgeless paddle. I also did a few tests for random things just to see what would happen. I took the twist weight before and after adding an overgrip and there was zero change. I added two strips of the pre-cut lead tape to either side of the grip of the paddle to see if there would be a change in twist weight at all and nothing changed. I had someone comment on a post I made about what people wanted to see in this video and they asked to see what would happen if I put lead tape in the hole of a Selkirk Lux and I thought that might be kind of fun. Of course since it's not on the perimeter of the paddle it shouldn't do much but let's just see for science. The stock twist weight of the Lux is 5.36 and the stock swing weight is 109.84. So I put 3 inches of 1 gram per inch lead tape in the bottom of the hole and got the new twist weight of 5.39 and a new swing weight of 110.04. So not much of a change as expected. I then filled the entire perimeter of the hole with lead tape and got a new twist weight of 5.65 and a new swing weight of 111.41. Comparing these results to 5 inches of lead tape starting 1 inch out from the handle, going up the throat into the sides of the paddle at a twist weight of 5.99 and a swing weight of 111.65, we can see putting lead tape in the hole definitely isn't helping your sweet spot, nor is it optimizing twist weight or swing weight. I also put two 3 gram pre-cut strips of lead tape at the 4 and 8 o'clock positions and got a new twist weight of 5.92 and a new swing weight of 113.01 proving out our original results. Lastly, I also did a test to see if electrical tape is heavy enough to add to the twist weight value, and it is. It gives you a slight boost in twist weight as you might expect, so don't forget to tape up that lead. If you want to see the review for my favorite protective eyewear in the space, click here. 
or the recently updated top five highest spinning paddles, click here. If you have any questions, leave a comment down below. Subscribe for more content just like this. Have a freaking wonderful day and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.